She's talented. She's the best person I know. And that's what I should have told her. <laughs> Lucky to be married as well. You guys are married here. Is that right in the front row? How many years again did you say? Uh, actually less than a year. Less than a year, brand new. Oh, congratulations. Give a round of applause. Nice. And where did you guys meet at? Here in Provo or? Uh, actually Lehigh. Lehigh. In the parking lot. <laughs> Is that where you meet girls in Utah, in the parking lot? You know what we're doing after the show? Going to the parking lot. <laughs> wow, I never knew you could do that. That's awesome. <laughs> we're gonna be friends on Facebook later. We're gonna hang out. So you've been married less than a year. Let me ask you if this has ever happened to you before, right? It's happening the other night. I was getting ready to go to sleep with my wife, right? She rolls over, looks me right in the face and goes, why'd you marry me? I was like, oh no, a pop quiz right now? Like, oh no, I don't have a Scantron or a number two pencil. I'm not ready for this test, you know? And I know why I married my wife, right? I love her. I love her. She's funny. She's charming. She's talented. She's the best person I know. And that's what I should have told her. But instead, I try to come up with any stupid movie line I could remember. You know what I mean? I was like, you complete me. And uh, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> so you think we're going to need a bigger boat later, you know? It's from Jaws, you know? And uh, she got mad. I've never seen my wife get this mad my entire life. She started screaming at me, you know? She's like, seriously? Seven years? We've been married for seven years. You can't come up with one reason why you married me. We have two beautiful children together. I support all your hopes and dreams of becoming a comedian. And you can't come up with one reason why you married me? I didn't know what to do, so I was like... <laughs> She was still there. <laughs> so I tried turning the tables on her. You ever do that, sir? No, like, he's like, that's a rookie move, little fella. <laughs> I tried turning the tables on her. I was like, well, why'd you marry me, right? And let me ask you if this answer would annoy you as much as it annoyed me, right? Because I can tell you're a manly guy, right? You got the facial hair from Utah. You probably kill small animals for fun, right? You're manly. <laughs> like, like a tough guy, you know? My wife looked me right in the face. She said, I married you because you are adorable. <laughs> you don't want to hear that as a guy, right? I want to be like, I married you because you're a tough guy. And look at me, I'm from Detroit. I'm pretty street. <laughs> you guys are looking at me like, you're an adorable tough guy. Look at you. Go get him, little fella. <laughs> this is a great date night, isn't it? You come out, you laugh, you forget about your problems. This is a fantastic date night, man. It's great, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It beats a date night my wife wanted to go out on recently. For our anniversary, my wife wanted to go out and see a revival of the musical Cats. That's what she wanted to do for fun. I was like, I'll go. We're gonna bring a laser pointer. Just watch them all freak out on stage. <laughs> I'm married. I just celebrated my seventh wedding anniversary, which is very exciting. So yeah. Oh, thank you. You guys are so nice. You're like, nice work, little guy. All right. Some of you are looking at me confused. Like, who married Flounder from Animal House? Like, how did that happen? Who who married little Corey Matthews from Boy Meets World? How did that happen? Where's, where's Mr. Feeney? We miss Mr. Feeney. I was very nervous about proposing. I was talking to my older brother for advice. He told me you're supposed to spend two months pay on the engagement ring. Have you heard that before? Two months pay? I'm a comedian, you know? <laughs> if I did that, the ring would cost $40. You know what I mean? Like, just be walking around with one of those ring pop suckers. We have married people, where are you at? Round of applause, married folks. Look at the enthusiasm coming out of some of you, like, yeah, great. 
This is the longest game of chicken ever. One of us has to get off. You guys are married there in the second row? Right there, yeah? How many years? 40. 40 years, oh my gosh, that's 40 years. I'm 34, so this is kind of what your marriage looks like right here, just a little. A little overweight, trying its best, and uh... <laughs> my wife and I—we don't fight that much. How about you guys? Forty years in, you fight? <laughs> Look at them; they're like, "We're fighting right now." Actually, we <laughs> we want to go to Applebee's. <laughs> my wife and I—we've only been in two fights. First fight we ever had was during our engagement process. You get to register for gifts. I didn't know that. I'm like, "Let's get married again. Let's get free stuff. That's great." <laughs> My wife wanted to register at a place called Bed Bath & Beyond. Have you ever heard of that place? <laughs> I'm a guy though, so I'm like, let's register at the Bass Pro Shop. You know what I mean? Like, Cabela's, let's go there. And uh, we compromised. And we went to Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> so, uh, she's pretty much in charge. <laughs> Second fight we had was a couple days ago. We played this game called Celebrity Crush, where you share each other's celebrity crushes. And if your relationship is going fine, don't play that game. <laughs> it's a lot of attention. My wife told me her celebrity crush, Harrison Ford. Let's see, she told me, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, he's old, right? <laughs> but I got really jealous because I'm like, I can't compete with that, right? My wife wants Han Solo. She ended up with an Ewok. It's like, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Looking like something you make in a Build-A-Bear. I know, it's a little weird. <laughs> But after 40 years, you guys gotta know everything about each other, I would imagine. See, I'm seven years, I'm still learning little things about my wife that I didn't know beforehand. Like, I just learned this about my wife recently. I didn't know this was a thing with people. My wife can't wink. I didn't know that was a thing, right? Normal people wink, it's kind of cute, isn't it? It's like, hey, what's going on? What's up? <laughs> my wife has got something weird with her eyelids, so when she goes to wink, she does this weird, like, <laughs> blinky eye thing with her face. The first time she did it, it was so awkward. We're driving in the car and she's like, so listen, I was thinking this weekend, you and I should go up north and you know. <laughs> what, go to an eye doctor? <laughs> like, what is happening to your face right now? Do you have allergies? <laughs> what is that move? My wife, too, she has a cat. She's had this cat since elementary school. No joke. This cat's 190 years old. <laughs> you know people like that? They love their pets, like no matter how disgusting of a creature it might be, right? <laughs> this cat has died four different times. <laughs> He's missing chunks of fur. Part of his ear is gone. He's wet for some reason. <laughs> like, like, why is he wet? That's gross. <laughs> It smells like my gym bag. What is that? She's patting him like, he's so cute. You should pet him. I'm like, you should wash your hands. That's not right. <laughs> Something's wrong with his little vocal cords. Like, he can't even meow like a normal cat, too. <laughs> like, you know, cats are cute and they're like, meow. Our cat's like, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a billy goat just limping around the house. <laughs> She's holding him like, he's adorable. Almost as cute as someone else I know. <laughs> like, Dude, this is weird. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure in relationships too, you know? My wife and I, we were dating for about two years before we got married. And everybody's like, when are you guys gonna get married? When are you get married, right? And we got married, everybody's like, when are you guys gonna have kids? And I was like, when are you gonna shut up? <laughs> like, trying to play Xbox right now. Give me some space, man. I'm on career mode, you know? I gotta <laughs> build up the prospects, man. It's a process, you know? <laughs> well, my wife and I, we actually have two kids at home. We have a four-year-old and we have a two-year-old. So, uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm just excited to be here with you guys. It's, uh... <laughs> It's exhausting. <laughs> I know this is horrible to admit, but sometimes I lie to my wife about having stand-up shows and I get a hotel and sleep for a couple hours. <laughs> like, I'm going to Provo, I'm out of here. 
She's like, that's not a real place. I'm like, yeah, it is. Use Google Maps, baby, it's awesome. Do I have people with kids? Or yeah, people with children? Kids? Yeah. You guys do? Yeah? What kind do you have? Or um, not what kind you have. Uh, big special and I blew it. Uh, you guys are looking at me like, we have goats, actually. Yeah, we let them run around the yard. What kind do you have? Boys, girls? Two girls and a boy, awesome. And what are the ages? Uh, 27. Oh, 27, so they're adults at this point. Okay, all right. Well, congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. Mine are small. It's tough being a parent, you know? Everything is tough about being a parent. Trying to name your kids is impossible now, even. We're trying to come up with a name for our kids. They give you this big book of baby names. You can't even pronounce half the names in the book, you know? I'm looking at the book, I'm like, who'd name their kid D-Clan? Like, what kind of name is D-Clan? My wife's like, that says Declan, you moron. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that was my second choice, actually, and... Uh... Turns out I can't read, basically. <laughs> Stop trying to come up with a name for our kids because we have such an unusual last name, too. My last name, Beningo. Right? Beningo. <laughs> Sounds like some kind of creature you'd find on the animal planet, doesn't it? <laughs> Two Australian guys sitting around drinking beer. Maybe the Beningo ate your baby. <laughs> Dingo, dingo, the course. So my wife asked me, she's like, what's your top choice for your son's name? What do you want to call him? I go, top choice, I don't even have to think about it. I want to call him Luke. <laughs> Just so I can walk around the house going, Luke, I am your father. Get to the minivan. <laughs> she's like, you're a moron. <laughs> it's like, I know. <laughs> she liked two names. Uh, she liked the name Frank. What do you think of that? Yeah, right? <laughs> Frankie Beningo. <laughs> That's not like the most mafia sounding kid in the world. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Frankie Beningo. Forget about it, hey. <laughs> Talking to me? All right. Another name my wife liked. I can't even make this up. This is just us being from the Midwest. My wife goes, I love this name since I was a little girl, but it's more of a nickname. She goes, I like the name Bubba. <laughs> yeah, looking right at you guys, Bubba. I was like, why don't we just name him D-Clan at this point? <laughs> Let's call him Honey Boo Boo, why not? <laughs> Bubba Beningo makes him sound like he has a stuttering problem, doesn't it? <laughs> What's your name, little fella? Bubba 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 Beningo. Okay, good luck with that, little fella. <laughs> so we call him Joey. It's kind of a cute, normal name. He's a sweet kid. He's two years old. He's full of life. He's excited. He's got a fat head, though. That's the only thing that's a little bit weird. <laughs> like, you ever seen a toddler with like, a head that's like way too big for their body? Right, we took him in for his two-year doctor checkup. His body is at the 10th percentile. His head, 90th percentile. <laughs> 90th, so basically he's got like a toddler body, but like the head of a 42-year-old man, you know? <laughs> he's got this big unibrow going across his forehead. <laughs> he's just dragging his head across the carpet. He can't quite lift it. <laughs> Stretching out all his t-shirts, you know? <laughs> I worry about him because I'm like, that's my son, you know? That's my son, I love him. What happens his head keeps growing at that speed, you know? Like, <laughs> what's he gonna be able to do for a job when he grows up, you know? Sports mascot, I think it's the only thing he could do, <laughs> just kind of walking around. I'm in the bleachers like, that's my son, he's the bobblehead. <laughs> very, very proud of him, he's doing very well. 
It's fun being a parent. It's tough. Kids don't understand things. He's too trying to potty train them. That's difficult. He doesn't understand the potty training thing. So he likes to just take his pants off all the time, which is awkward. Like we're at Thanksgiving dinner. He just stands up in the middle of the table and takes his pants off. Everybody in the family is like completely mortified. I'm like, buddy, what are you doing? He's like, it's funny. I go, it's a felony. Put your pants back on. <laughs> this is awkward for the whole family, little guy. You can't do it. But he is, he's a sweetheart, I love him. And I, I tell you, kids do the sweetest things sometimes. I think uh, the cutest thing my son does, anytime he gets in trouble, anytime he's done anything bad, he hides behind his hands. <laughs> Have you ever seen a kid do that before? <laughs> I think that is the sweetest thing in the world. I was watching him, he's taking his cards, he's throwing them against the wall. I go, Joey, stop! And he just does that move. <laughs> that is the best defense mechanism ever, don't you think? Don't you wish you could do that as adults again? <laughs> Can you imagine that? You show up late to work, your boss is screaming at you, where have you been? You're four and a half hours late, we had that important meeting. <laughs> I think we gotta bring that back. <laughs> Little things they don't get. It's fun being a parent, but like I said, it's exhausting sometimes. Really is. Little things I can't do anymore, you know? When you think about your single days, those were the best times, weren't they? You could do whatever you want. When you're a parent, little things you can't do. I have little fantasies about my life, you know? In my past life. You know what my number one fantasy is now that I'm a parent? You know what I wish I could do the most again? Sleep. Sleep, sleep is number two, actually. <laughs> sleep is number two. My number one fantasy? I wish I could just eat a cookie by myself. That's what I wish I could do. Yeah. I haven't had a cookie to myself in like four years, you know what I mean? Right, because the minute you open up a container of cookies, those kids hear it, they start coming at you like those zombies from The Walking Dead. This is a true story. I actually locked myself in my own bathroom to try to eat cookies. Have you ever done that before, parents? That is the saddest moment in your life. You're in there just looking around. It doesn't even work, because then their hand comes beneath the door like a cat. They start... <laughs> I can smell the chips, ahoy, Dad! <laughs> Just one in Oreo. I don't think that's too much to ask. <laughs> My daughter, actually, she has a great imagination. She's four. She likes to pretend she's a cat all the time. <laughs> Which is kind of cute when you see kids do that, isn't it? Except it's awkward when she does it in public, you know what I mean? <laughs> like we'll be at Applebee's, she'll be going up to strangers' plates, licking them. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> going up to their legs. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the squirt bottle back. <laughs> get off the table. My daughter, she's four, she is, she's adorable. She gets uh, in really bad temper tantrums too. That's what, <laughs> you know what I mean? You ever say, and I don't have those dad instincts, you know what I mean? I watch her, she's in the middle of the store, she just freaks out. My first reaction's like, all right, that's not our kid. Let's get out of here, let's go, leave her here. <laughs> but my wife is like damage control, she's amazing. She's like, don't worry about it, Lauren's gonna grow out of it, Lauren's gonna grow out of it. And then I get nervous, cause I'm like, what happens if she doesn't grow out of it, right? <laughs> What if she's 35 years old working some office job? Like, hey, Lauren, I'm really sorry. Got to come into work on Saturday. No! <laughs> Shouldn't have had my keys in my pocket for that. <laughs> working for you guys. <laughs> Sometimes kids do creepy things. That's what I noticed too. It's happened to me the other night. I was sleeping peacefully, right? Happen to randomly wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> My daughter is on the edge of the bed just staring at me. <laughs> I'm like, hey buddy, did you have a bad dream? Have you just been watching me sleep for a little while? <laughs> I'm like, are you possessed by a demon right now? What is going on? She gets really quiet. She goes, Daddy. Meow! 
mouth and then runs out of the room. Can't deal with this. Can't deal with this. Nothing about me is tough, though. That's a problem. Nothing is manly at all. I have really bad allergies, too, right? <laughs> can't be a tough guy with allergies. Can you figure that? Some guy's like, what's up, bro? You want to step outside? I'm like, I can't. The pollen count's too high. <laughs> <laughs> Time out. I need my Flonase. <laughs> I don't think you get many timeouts in fights. <laughs> I did one tough thing recently, one really manly thing. I got a black eye. Yeah, that's pretty tough, isn't it? It's pretty street. You want to hear how I got the black guy? You want to hear how tough I am? My two-year-old son threw a toy across the room and it smacked me in the eye. You know how embarrassing that is? All my friends were like, Beningo, nice, what happened? Black eye, you get into a hockey fight, you stop a robbery, I'm like, this, Fisher Price. Mm. <laughs> They're like, why are you limping? I'm like, I stepped on a Lego. <laughs> Those things hurt so bad. <laughs> Nothing about me is tough. I'm a flincher, too. You know, people like that, they're always jumpy. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? <laughs> it's because I have an older brother. I grew up the middle child in my family. So, uh, yeah, anybody else? Middle children? Where are you guys? Yeah. <laughs> Look how excited they get. Someone pay attention to me, please, come on. Please. Someone just listen to me. <laughs> That's why I do stand-up. It's like, will you guys be my friends? <laughs> it's very tough being the middle child, isn't it? It's the worst. Like, especially if your other siblings are more successful than you are. Like, this is a true story. At one point in my life, I was 26 years old, doing stand-up comedy, living in my parents' basement. <laughs> Yeah, that's not adorable. That's sad is what that is. I was always joking with my dad. I was like, check it out, dad. Older brother, he got married, he moved out. Sister Emily, she got married, she moved out. It's like, you know, it'd be awesome, mom and dad, is if you guys left, I'd have my own place. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed because they did not. <laughs> They're like, your comedy career better take off. It's like, if I can just make it to Provo. Take that, college. <laughs> oh, true story, I actually went to college for seven years in Michigan, that's where I'm from, and uh, yeah, oh, thank you, you heard of it before? <laughs> Are you from Michigan, really? No, did you come all the way for the special, or what's, uh, what's happened? <laughs> it's like, we heard the little guy, he's over there, we gotta go see him. I live in a really small town called Chessening, Michigan. Not sure if you've ever heard of that before. It's so small, it has one traffic light in the entire town. <laughs> very small, very awkward. Everybody gets to know each other. It's a weird town. Over the summer this year, the car wash in Chessening burned to the ground. Like, <laughs> how does a car wash burn to the ground? <laughs> the whole thing is made out of water, right? It seems like that would have been the easiest fix in the world. Like, anybody got a quarter? <laughs> We're heroes. <laughs> but I did, I went to Central Michigan University. I studied history, that was my major. Kind of a cool subject. You get to learn about all kinds of stuff that happened before. And uh, I, I, I majored on the presidents. And uh, there's a funny story about one of our presidents, uh, my favorite guy in the entire world, William Howard Taft. Uh, there was a story that apparently he was so tall and so large, he got stuck in the White House bathtub. <laughs> You ever hear that story? Like, I don't feel bad for Taft. I feel bad for the Secret Service agent that had to deal with the whole situation. Can you imagine that? It's like his first day on the job. Like, all right, go ahead. What's that? <laughs> Fat eagle is stuck in the tub. <laughs> what coat is that? I'm new. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, he's actually stuck in the tub. Oh. Okay. Poor Taft is in trouble. He's just in the bathtub like this the whole time. <laughs> I'm stuck. First job I had, though, before I became a comedian, I wasn't very good at it. I was a substitute teacher in a middle school. Yeah, yeah. 
taught for two years and I uh, learned something about other people's kids. <laughs> They're evil. <laughs> not, not a big fan at all. <laughs> like I wasn't good at classroom management, you know, they'd be running around, I'd be like, hey, come on you guys. <laughs> come on you guys. <laughs> It's not very effective. <laughs> but all the teachers, they pulled me aside. They're like, here's some classroom management moves you can do. Like one of the moves, I don't know if you guys do this as teachers, it's a one, two, three, eyes on me. Have you done that one before? And all the kids are like, hey, teach. <laughs> Another one they do, they flick the lights on and off. It's supposed to confuse the kids. Like, oh no. <laughs> There's a power shortage, everybody down. <laughs> My favorite one they showed me in college, I don't know if you've done this one, it's called Quiet Coyote. Have you seen Quiet Coyote before? <laughs> yeah, look, his mouth is closed, but his ears are open for listening. <laughs> yeah, that works in kindergarten, right? <laughs> I tried doing that in middle school. I'm like, come on, you guys, Quiet Coyote. They're like, you're a loser, whatever. I'm like, fair enough, let's do a movie day. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> Gather around, troops. Had the projector. <laughs> it's amazing how far technology's gone in the last couple of years, right? Everything now is on your cell phone. It's amazing. Like my favorite piece of technology is on the cell phone. I love the FaceTime. I think that is the greatest invention anyone ever came out with. I love it because I travel a lot. I don't get to see my kids. But it's very frustrating trying to FaceTime with like a four-year-old and a two-year-old because they don't quite get the technology, right? Normal people, what do you do? When you FaceTime, you hold the phone where? Write it about there, right? Not my four-year-old daughter. She will hold it as close to her face as possible. So all I see is just a giant eye and nose and just steam coming out of her face, just <laughs> I love you, daddy. Meow, meow. <laughs> meow. She's very territorial. She won't let anyone else hold the phone, so everything is just very blurry and awkward. <laughs> Feel like you're gonna throw up. You're like, put the phone down, please. <laughs> Eventually, she does put the phone down, which I like, because that's my son's opportunity to come in the frame, you know? His fat head starts poking in, you know? <laughs> Looks like a giant air balloon just coming through. <laughs> the only thing more frustrating than trying to FaceTime with my kids is trying to FaceTime with my parents. My parents are in their 60s. They don't quite get the technology either, you know? When I go to FaceTime with my dad, my dad will hold the phone as close to his face as possible. And I hear him, I can hear you, but I can't see you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. I'm like, Dad, you have a flip phone. It's probably not gonna work, Dad. <laughs> Gotta upgrade. Everything's on the cell phone. The texting, you guys like doing that here in Provo? Texting? Yeah, just the three of you, all right. <laughs> Lively group. I feel like I'm bothering you guys. Uh, <laughs> they have rules now where you can't text and drive. I like that. That's so dangerous, isn't it? You're supposed to be focused on the road. You can't find the P, right? Oh. <laughs> Start to drift. BRB, I crashed. Sad face. <laughs> So I, love, I love those emoji faces. Those things are great, because they only work in the text. They don't work in real life. You ever notice that? Some of those faces we don't do in real life. There's a face where you're sticking your tongue out. We don't do that in real life. Do, hey, Mary, want to go to the mall tomorrow? Uh... <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good. <laughs> Another cool piece of technology on the phone. I love the GPS system. I love that. That's the best. It's a little old school, but I love it, right? I love it because I travel a lot for comedy. I get lonely when I travel. But it feels like my wife is still in the car <laughs> with me when I go. You know what I mean? The minute you miss a turn, there she is, recalculating route, recalculating route. You never listen to me. Bah, 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 bah. This is very realistic. I like this. I think they need to update Garmin. They should give her like the silent treatment mode. I think that'd be kind of cool, you know what I mean? Right? Wouldn't that be cool? You make too many turns, there she is, all mad looking out the window. Just... <sighs> I 
What's wrong, Garmin? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm a little lost. Do I make a write up here? <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> so this is awesome. Good to have her back. Technology is amazing. It's supposed to be simple, right? It's supposed to be easy to use, but I'm an idiot when it comes to technology. I'm just a, a dumb guy in general, I think. Like, here's a, a weird technology blunder that happened a couple weeks ago. I was doing some cruise ships uh, recently. Anyone ever been on a cruise before? You guys ever gone? Yeah. No. Where did you guys go to? Um, I went to uh, Mexico. Mexico. Caribbean. Caribbean, awesome. Honduras? No. Oh, you're missing out. Honduras is the best place ever. They have this thing, that's my favorite place to go because they have this outdoor zoo called the Monkey Park, which is awesome. So they have these wild monkeys that'll like climb on your head and stuff. It's fantastic. Like there are two monkeys and I get to go feed them. The guy's like, here, you could feed these monkeys. I'm like, cool, all right. So I go to give one of the monkeys like a strawberry. The other one gets mad. He's like, Ehh. he's like swinging at me. I'm like, oh dude, why is he mad? The guy running the zoo is like, you're very furry. He think you're stealing his girlfriend. <laughs> Never had that one happen before. <laughs> it's because I'm adorable, is that what you said? <laughs> if anybody's got any other bits, just feel free to yell them out. I mean, that was, that was actually spot on. <laughs> If you get like a random 12 cent check in the mail, that's the residuals from the show <laughs> for doing that joke. That's gonna be awesome. You just be like, check that out. I'm a writer, I'm a comedy writer now. We're gonna be friends on Facebook. So. So here's a stupid technology blunder. This happened to me. So I'm flying down to Miami. I go in the airport bathroom, right? I wash my hands. I'm trying to get that paper towel dispenser to work in the bathroom. You know, that stupid, I'm in front of it like some kind of ninja, right? Like, oh, dude. To get this thing to work, it is not working. <laughs> this guy next to me is just staring at me like crazy. Finally, he walks up, turns that little hand crank. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> so you guys are fun. I had a good time. Do you guys have a good time? Yeah. Oh. I like you guys. Good, good luck with the parking lot. Oh, it goes well for you. Yeah, brand new year, which is cool. <laughs> Gotta lose some weight, too. Eat too much junk food, that's my problem. How about you guys, man? It's the best, isn't it? It's the best. Like, food is getting crazy out of control. Like, this happened to me a couple weeks ago. I went to a McDonald's. They had salt shakers on the tables at McDonald's. <laughs> Who's eating McDonald's going, you know what this needs? A little bit more salt, yeah. <laughs> Barely tasted on me. It's happening today. I love fast food. I went to Taco Bell for dinner tonight. I did that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys like it or? Um... <laughs> Use my credit card to pay for it uh, because my career is on fire <laughs> right now. <laughs> How sad your life has become when you have to finance a chalupa. You know, you're like, all right. Zip it through, see what happens. I had this awkward moment with the lady behind the counter because she asked if she could see ID with the credit card just to make sure that the credit card wasn't stolen. Is that a thing in America now, stealing credit cards? The first place you take it is Taco Bell, for real? That's where you got... We're gonna max this baby out. Dollar eighty nine at a time. <laughs> Forget the plasma screen TV, you morons. I'm gonna make it rain chalupa. <laughs> Do 
getting this party started. This was pretty awkward. This has never happened to me before. I went through the drive through window today, right? Got my fast food bag. Put it on the passenger car seat and the passenger car seatbelt light came on. <laughs> It's like, how much food did I order? <laughs> if the car thinks there's another human being in the car. Still ate it. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was so good. Gotta lay off that stuff, man. I gotta work out a little more, too. Yeah. I always set goals for myself when it comes to fitness. Don't you guys? Yeah, one person. <laughs> Everybody else is looking around like, Taco Bell sounds amazing right now. Yes. Yes. Let's carpool. We're going to meet this guy in the parking lot and we're all going to carpool. <laughs> I don't mean to pick on you, but I'm also amazed that you're wearing shorts in the middle of the winter. That's just like a, it's just like I'm a tough guy. That's what I do. Yeah, and exercise, nobody works out here. You try to, don't you? Don't you try to? I always do. I always wake up. I'm like, all right, tomorrow, I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to run four miles. I'm going to get back into shape. Then I wake up at noon like, all right, I'm going to have some cookies and take a nap. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds amazing. I don't like going to the gym, of course, because you always run into those cliche gym guys. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know those big gym guys? They're like, the veins are sticking out of their necks. Right, they always want to talk to you for some reason. They puff themselves up. What's going on, little fella? So they crying in the corner. What's up, bro? Right. What's up, buddy? Yeah. So, what's this? Yeah, man, it's a Gatorade. Got it in a squirt bottle because I can't bend my arms. <laughs> we go bench press a moose. I'll see you later. I'm out of here, bro. Everybody's always on some weird diet at the gym, too. You ever notice that? They want to brag about it. You know what I've been doing the last three weeks, bro? Eating wood. That's it, bro. I'm an animal. Small balsa sticks, sawdust. I'm an animal. I'm like, cool. Are you a beaver? What's the matter with you? What are you... I can do... I, can, I don't want to do those conversations. This one guy comes up to me the other day, sweating like crazy. He's like, bro, nothing feels better than feeling the burn of the gym. Nothing feels better than feeling the burn of the gym. It's like, I can think of lots of things that feel better than feeling a burn at the gym. Like, first of all, not feeling a burn at the gym. I think that feels good. <laughs> Safety of the sofa feels fantastic. I'm all about that. That's, that's a good feeling. It's a great feeling. <laughs> Gets even more awkward. This happened to me a couple days ago. One of those big gym guys comes out to me. You know, what's up, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? You want to work out with me? Come on, bro, just work out with me. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. I'm actually on this machine right now. He's like, that's the water fountain. I'm like, yeah. I'm really good at this machine. I'm really good. So you get that fight or flee thing, right? You're like, oh, I'm just going to flee. I'm going to get out of here, you know? So I get on the treadmill to just get away from the guy. And this is the most intense human being I've ever seen in my entire life. He goes up this weight machine and he gets down on his knees, right? And he's pulling the weights all the way down and across his body. But every time he does it, he's doing that gym guy grunt noise, you know? So he's like, bleh, 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 yeah, bleh. And then he makes eye contact with me. I didn't know what to do, so I was like, bleh. Guys, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming out.